All right, y'all, welcome back to the Erica Time Show. We are back with this beautiful piece right here. Check it out. That is on its way. We are getting ready to demold this. Uh, we're going to take it to see our buddy Joel. He's going to hook us up with the uh, planing, drum sanding, getting it shaped up. And then uh, me and Tom got a bunch of work to do when we come back from there. Uh, getting this sucker all the way to the finish. But we wanted to bring y'all along, be a part of everything. We want to show you, walking it through, starting out with the demolding. We're taking all the clamps off, the blocking, everything, and we're going to be prying this sucker right out of the mold. Usually these pop out pretty good. Uh, we don't have a bunch of struggle with it, but you never know. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start out by taking all these clamps off. Um, just in case you don't know, uh, you do not have to, we will have gloves later on, the nitro gloves, you know, for the oil on your skin, fingerprints and stuff. It doesn't matter right now. This is going to go through the planer, the drum sander. So you won't see me use any of those here on the front side, but I will remind you as the video rolls on, you all are watching. I'll remind you later on as to when to put them on because uh, last thing you want to do is walk this sucker all the way down to about 5,000 grit sanding and actually get a couple of fingerprints in your wood that's going to flash right through as soon as you go to pour the resin on. So we'll get into all that here in just a little bit. All right, so after all the blocks and clamps and stuff come off, next thing you want to do is take out all your screws underneath. And occasionally, uh, occasionally these screws, uh, we've had them break before, we've had them strip. So, you know, sometimes these screws along the way, we already had one earlier uh, down at the other end, but sometimes these screws will get in here and you just got to play with them, finagle them and you know, get them to come out. So we've got one stuck in our side on that opposite corner that is just stuck in there. He's not coming out. Well, he's hooked to this plate. So as long as it's not hooked to the sheet, we're good. That block will end up coming off. No sweat, but you really don't. If you get one stuck underneath into the sheeting, into the wall, uh, whatever's going on there, you really want to try to get that out or it's going to hurt you trying to get these walls off with all this tuck tape and everything else. So once the screws are out, then we're gonna get our blocks off top and keep moving. All right, so this is one of my favorite parts. This was when I can let the project have it. No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> but we do got two different ones here. This is gonna give more of a solid blow than this. Uh, a lot of times when they're in deeper resin like this, that's what will happen. You'll have to hit that sucker pretty hard. But uh, just to give you an example, that's what the tuck tape is about, to keep that from locking in there. You can see that perfect square pattern. But uh, that's what we're doing here. And you're not going to hurt a thing. Sometimes they're stubborn. They'll come on out. So, uh, And let me tell you this, too. Just in case anybody's wondering, see the amount of bubbles right here. Let me tell you what happens. Uh, none of this stuff matters at all. It's We were two and a half inches thick before any resin went on top or on the bottom. So realistically, we're probably two and three quarters of an inch thick total. We're going to end up being an inch and a half. So roughly a half an inch is going to get planed down on the top side and on the bottom side. But what I want to point out to you, a couple of things. Number one, you can tell right here, I've got a little lip. Just a little bit of difference. It's where we poured all this out. Everything went underneath. A lot of times it slides under your wood on the bottom side through the process. And before it actually gels up 10 to 12 hours into it, um, even though it stops, you fill everything up and everything looks good and level, you can walk away and several hours later, it actually worked its way underneath that piece, which is going to drop your sea level up top here, if you will. So that's one thing that happened with the bubbles. 
Uh, for anybody that don't know, at, at its peak point right here in this pool, this got up to 132 degrees, so it was it was hot. We actually had a fan sitting here. It was cooling a lot of this through the process, but normal range for the peak of casting resin in a pretty decent thick pour, which was just two and a half inches thick and as wide as this is, you can imagine the heat that was generated through here. Uh, at almost 132, 135 degrees, anywhere from 130, to 170 degrees is a normal range for your resin as it is trying to gel up uh, to, to reach those temperatures. It is not uncommon at all. That's why we have that fan there. But what happened is in the deep part here, this really started to heat up. It got up to about 132 degrees. And as the resin was flowed over onto our surface here, this is very small amount of resin compared to this deep pool right here. That's why right along this edge, you see the bubbles here. That was not here a couple of hours into the process, but 10 to 12 hours into the casting, when I came back here and was playing with all the resin, this was starting to happen. It's because the peak temperature here was 132 degrees sitting here steaming up in that thick space and right next to it is a little small that just could not take that much heat so it caused it here to start accumulating here on the sidewalls but none of that matters it's all going to be planed out i uh, just wanted to let you know if this is your first one that you're doing or anything like that uh i just want to let you know that that's normal yeah you gotta watch these blocks tom or might hurt you hurt me something Yeah, so listen, when these blocks come off, we put them back here on the shelf. Don't throw them away. They're already ready to go for your next project. So if you see any bald spots, anything like that, you can always retape them. It just saves you from doing this every time. We collect a bunch of these back here. So this is what it looks like after we got all those off. You can clearly see the perfect squares laid out. Now we're getting ready to start working on these sidewalls, getting them off. Sometimes they come off pretty simple. Sometimes they're a pain. Just depends. All right, so now is when we're going to, everything's done. Now we're going to get this off. A lot of times you can see it flexing already. So a lot of times uh, it doesn't take a lot. Sometimes, I mean, these suckers get stuck. Believe it or not, this tape is uh, super strong and when it overlaps you know we had tape in the four corners all that all that stuff can play a role trying to get these walls off for the most part i'll use a heavier blow on it and you just want to sit here and sit on it like that once it's kind of hit out of place there then it makes it easier a little bit. Now, the reason this is not coming off right now, let me point this out. Remember, um, we went around this whole thing locking all this wood together with that tuck tape. So right now, I'm trying to pull in the tuck tape right here, check it out. Right here in the corner. You see where it's at. So that's the reason that this sidewall is not coming all the way off. So, you know, a couple things you can you can peel this back some just to get the the wood going. Uh, we pry this a lot of times. So there comes a point where you don't want to do a dead blow anymore. It's just a matter of a little finesse walking it through and uh, you know, just keep coming at it until it comes off. All right, so look, it's another thing we do a lot of times. Uh, we are clearly shown, Tom. We're clearly broke away. But again, when I tell you, man, how strong this tuck tape is. So let me see your knife real quick. I'm going to do a relief cut. So once I pry this back, just like that, I'm going to do a little relief cut right here in the tape. And as we pry, I can see what tape is still holding right here. See, believe it or not. That is just super, super strong. And it just makes it easier, there we go, to get that to roll right over. 
just like that. That is why we go to the trouble of taping this the way we do. But that tape is just super strong. Look, it was so strong it broke the one by just prying away. So that's why we do that though, just to, uh, just to help support and everything. It just makes all that super strong. Right there, let me see that knife. Yep, you're good. See how strong that is? Right there, relief cut. What we like to do a lot of times is a relief cut. Just like that, that ensures that that tape is no longer stuck up under here. Look at that meat. <laughs> Look, I wanna show you something. We got, we got this off right here, but this tape is super, look at that, super strong. That's what all that crying and effort was for because that came on the base and wrapped up the side. So, I mean, it locks that sucker like a champ. All right, so here's where we're at. We got the two sides still on, okay? The reason this is so tough to get off, I just want to show you at home so you know. This is already broke away. Clearly, you can see it broke away from the sides all the way down. But because we tuck tape across the bottom and then we come up on our rails here, that just ensures as we're trying to bend this over, that tape is really locked on bottom and sidewall and it's really holding that guy. We don't want to force that off. There's no point. We got two sides off. Now we're going to start working the bottom sheet off of the slab. What we like to do is get in here with a five way. It's very tight. We get in here with a smaller guy so that we can put a breaking bar in here. Now, you don't have to sit here. Uh, it's not like you're breaking into a vault or something. It's We don't use the, the point side here. We actually turn it over backwards. I pry with the little guy to get this under going, and then I pick up so that the points are digging in to here uh, not that it would hurt if it dug into here, but that's more we got a plane to get those impressions, those two stab wounds. That's more we got a plane off here at the bottom. But just a little bit of pressure. Then I'll take this guy and set him down here, wedge him in there real good. Come out of that. See, a lot of this, look, a lot of this is we're still stuck with that tape. What I try to do when I pry, I try to pry where the wood's at. If you've got resin over here, it's not going to hurt anything. You just want a little bit and keep walking it down. You don't want to put all your light into that right there. And, uh, you know, you're never going to break this. You're never going to crack it like that. But just as a precaution, just as a precaution. So once you've worked that area, then I'm going to start to work this area over here. This end down here is pretty good. Now I'm going to start working this in here and the whole object is to get this front side completely off and then we'll, we'll pull the whole thing. Ah. 
<laughs> I forgot a screw. No wonder that was giving us a problem. So, hey, future reference. Check all your screws underneath and double check them. Okay, so look. See how I can stick my hand underneath it here. As that pried up, scoot it over a little, pried a little bit more, put a five-way all the way under to keep that lifted. Now I got this little guy sitting under here, so the last little bit here is right here. Now, just like that, we are pretty much out. So it's always good to wedge your stuff as you pry so that you don't have to keep cranking on it. It's just going to sit there and hold it and make it so uh, when you actually get to this point, you can just pry that guy right up just like that. And that's why we weren't concerned with the back wall. Because look, bam, there you go. We're out. We're out, Tom. <laughs> On the way to get it playing. All right, y'all coming with us. We're going to take you along the way. Drum sander, planer, the whole nine. So we're going to get this sucker loaded up. And uh, man, it's got some weight to it, brother. Oh, yeah. We're going to get this sucker loaded up, and uh, we're going to have some fun today. So look how thick that guy is. So you can see where we've pried. I got that tool in there underneath, but just look how thick that block is. Boy, it's gonna be pretty when it's done. 